All right, I'm gonna make some drawers. These are gonna be uh, Baltic birch, 5 8 inch thick. And we're gonna be uh, doing this kind of joinery with it. So rather than doing dovetails or um, anything else, we're gonna be doing a pocket screws. There's gonna be a drawer front on the front. So that's gonna leave a clean side. And um, these boxes are gonna be painted, I believe. So they're gonna be Baltic birch with a paint grade bottom as well. Um, quarter inch thick bottom. And uh, we're going to be using undermount slides, and those slides are going to be um, half inch up underneath. So that groove needs to be one half inch up from the bottom. We have to figure out the size of these. So what I do is I take the opening size, 21 and 1 16th, and then I subtract 3 8 inch for the slides. So 3 8 inch using a 5 8 inch material, and um, that's what we have to subtract for the slides. And um, that's going to give us 20 and 11 16th total width. Okay, so I have that here. Total width 20 and 11 16ths outside of the box. 15 inches deep and six and a quarter high. So for our parts, what I do is I take the plywood thickness because this is sandwiched in between the front and back is sandwiched in between the two sides. So I take the plywood thickness, I times it by two, and I get that thickness, I subtract it from 20 and 11 sixteenths. In this particular case, this 5 8 material is actually 1 32nd less than 5 8 So if you take 5 8 times two, that's an inch and a quarter. And then if you subtract a 32nd from each piece, that would be um, a sixteenth short of one and a quarter. So we're gonna take 20 and 11 sixteenths overall width, subtract one and a quarter, which is how thick the, the box is total. And then we're gonna add back that one sixteenth of an inch. That's gonna give us 19 and a half inches. So 19 and a half by six and a quarter, and then 15 inches by six and a quarter. So this is our cut list right there. We're gonna have eight of those because there's four drawers. 15 and six by six and a quarter and 19 and a half by six and a quarter. I've got the 80 tooth in there now. I'm gonna go ahead and rip these pieces. Okay, now for the drawer groove for the bottom panel, we're going to go ahead and use the regular blade. The kind of drawer slides that I use to the bottom of the groove, to the bottom of the panel, it has to be a half inch. I'm going to check it since I have this piece left over from the last drawers I made. I can take this and put it right up next to it and just make sure we're good. Okay, for that last pass, I just moved the fence over because I had that little sliver in the middle. I just tapped it over a sixteenth of an inch or so and it cleared off that little ridge that was right in the middle. So now we have a nice groove, a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. Okay, well this blade, you know how I messed it up by cutting that dang vinyl flooring. It, it, on accident I didn't I wasn't thinking about it being a problem and oh, 
this destroyed it. So, um, anyways, I just switched it out to a freshly sharpened one. Um, whenever I change the blades on my miter saw, I I want to unplug it because this is one of those tools that you could really easily hit the the um, power on and you could do some damage so okay so I'm at my miter saw and I just want to make a note I know I've talked about this before but you want to have this clean edge on the outside of the um, the side pieces so the clean side is going to be the groove side down that's going to give me the clean side on the top so all the sides are going to get groove side down when I'm cutting it because I want that top to be clean so that when the drawer front goes on it's a nice nice clean crisp cut and there's no tear out and on the fronts and backs I want the groove side up because I want the inside that corner there I want that to be nice and crisp and clean. Grooves are, but sometimes when you cut with the groove up or down, you can get tear out at the groove. So it's nice because I'm going to be putting a bull nose on this top. So normally I wouldn't want the top at the fence because there's tear out there, but the bull nose is going to clean up that tear out. But the groove is less likely to tear out when it's this far back because the blades going down versus at the end of the cut where the blades going up so you can think about it from the rotation of the blade as you get closer to the fence the blade is now moving up versus here it's going down so it's pushing the fibers down versus pulling them up here so you might notice sometimes you'll get a nice smooth cut here and then as you go here you start to see a little a uh, little burring at the top of the piece. That's because of the rotation of the blade. Okay, for the bull nose, I use this really big radius bull nose bit, and that's just going to give me essentially an ovolo profile. So it's not an actual bull nose because it's so big on this 5 8 material. It's uh, kind of an ellipse. So you'll see that. I'm going to go ahead and load this up, and this you got to um, lower the speed down. And this is actually a kind of a cheesy um, bit, uh, MLCS, I believe this is. And this I need to uh, drop down to probably about 12,000 RPM, something like that. All right, now when you set the height of this, you want to um, test and obviously make test cuts. But your goal is to have it be even. Um, on both sides right so you want that curve to be the same which means when you put this on up against the blade the cutting surface what you want to do is you want to center that and the best way to um, tell if you're centered is that the top and bottom are making contact with the cutting edge if it's too high or if it's too low only one will be making contact so you can tell really quickly if you're centered by just looking at that cutting profile and seeing that it's touching top and bottom which means you're going to be really close to center so it's probably going to need to be fine-tuned a little bit but it'll give you a good start start now as far as the depth of cut that's probably where it's going to be um, 
one of those tricky ones where this particular one you're removing all the material so um, this is really nice to have an adjustable fence now um, I don't have an adjustable fence on this particular router but what I do instead is I actually just take a piece of tape and typically it's actually two pieces of tape and I put it on the outfeed that way when I take away all this material here it's going to um, run on the tape rather than um, going and not having support and then you would have snipe at the end. Having the power feed on here makes moving this a little bit more complicated just because it's a little heavier because I have a lot more weight but um, I lube up the table so that it slides pretty nicely to where you're removing just enough material to make the profile and just a little bit more than you need. Clamp it down and we'll see where that takes us. Okay, so let's try this and see what it looks like and then if it needs to be adjusted, which I'm sure it will, we'll do that. Okay, well, the height is really good. The, um, the depth of cut, I can feel a little flat spot right in the middle. So I know it needs to go back just a little bit. Okay, well, you can't see that, but I can feel it. And I can tell when I routed it that I took off just enough material. And I can feel there's snipe right there. So there's a little line. So basically what happens is when you take off all the material, the workpiece has nowhere to go, right? Because there's a, there's a void back there. So what happens is I'm taking off all the material and then when I get to this very end where I lose contact with this fence, it drops in and then it touches this fence. That's why you get snipe. So right as soon as it hit, it released from that fence, it dropped in. And that's when you get snipe. All right, now um, two pieces is what I usually use. Okay, now obviously it's going to be dependent on the profile and how much material you're taking off. But generally speaking, two seems to be good for me. You changed. Um, sometimes when you uh, try to use like maybe um, business cards, they're too thick. Um, but you could use a little shims but the problem is is that this stuff is so thin it gives you a very very um, finite adjustment so that's really cool so <laughs> You know, you could tell if there's snipe, you can feel it really fast. And if there is snipe, you'll see a bump in the paint job. So you want, you don't want there to be snipe. But that looks really good. And it is centered. And there's no snipe. So that two pieces of tape was perfect. Happen. If I keep all these pieces the same height, when these pieces intersect, there's going to be a void left over. So what we do is we'll actually subtract the height of the um, fronts and backs and we'll actually drop it down by the amount this drops down so that is you know an eighth inch or so that's what we'll drop it down it doesn't have to be the same but it just has to be something so in one eighth inch I'll, I'll take away <laughs> see the drop down of that piece there 
by taking off one eighth of an inch, you can see what that left me with. All right. Next step is I want to trim off the back of these rather than notching them. I like to just remove the whole back part that essentially is the um, part that you would notch typically with undermount sides. So I'm actually going to take off this groove right there. I'm going to cut all of them at that location right there so that when you put this in your back can slide right through. parts here and these parts here so obviously they go on the side it doesn't have the groove that makes sense so we'll be putting them like this all right I've got quite a few pockets to make for these drawers so I'm going to go ahead and use my um, foreman All right, I got a bunch of these to make, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, now to put these together, I like to use a clamp. The clamp helps hold it nice and square and tight. Let's tension it up a little bit. Just enough to hold it, but enough to adjust it. So you wanna make sure that it's flush And also, if it's a little bit in, it's better than a little bit out. But flush, especially on the front piece, you want these things to be really good. And I've got my clutch set on 14, because these actually will go through the 5 8 material, just barely. It's uh, good to just do a test piece on some scrap. Make sure your depth of um, your drill, your holes aren't too deep. But at 14, it's locking in plenty tight and not pulling through. It's amazing how strong this uh, wood is because you can pull through really good. All right, I always just give it a little check just to make sure it didn't blow through. All right, now for the back. It's like this. So now you know why I want the clean sides to be on the inside versus the outside. Well, sometimes you have clean sides, like I have clean sides on both here, but some pieces tear out pretty good. Okay, so now what we want is this one's a little harder to do because we took some of that height off of this, but just tension up the clamp just a little bit and then make it so you can adjust it if you don't have enough tension. So I always give customers options. For various things. One of them is drawer box material and construction. A lot of times people want dovetails. If I show them a dovetail and explain, you know, this is a real nice joint, but a lot of people um, want to save money and go with this type of a um, box. And when it's all done, it's very, very clean and very well done. So um, I'll just take a little sandpaper and knock off these little um, pieces on the end because it's plywood. You All right, I need a measure for the bottom. And um, that's pretty simple to do. 
little opening there. So you're just measuring from here, one end of the groove to the other. And you could leave a little space, it's generally nice. So we have to take this number that we get and add the depth of the groove. So that is 14 and 7 sixteenths. And then the depth of the groove in this particular case is 5 sixteenths strong. So we're, we're, we're going to add, let's say we'll add a quarter inch to this number. So 14 and um, 7 sixteenths, so it's 14 and 11 sixteenths is going to be the, the number. That'll give us a little extra. white to face in or you could do this if you wanted to like I said I like the white let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, staple these okay now my staple gun is actually pneumatic so I have to hook it up to a compressor we'll get these guys flush on the end and get that And these are just uh, five eighths length. Okay. That uh, does a nice job. Nice tight. Okay, now the that part there, I'm going to put the clips on, and I'm not going to glue anything in here. I'm just going to put the clips and that'll be it. All right, well, I'm happy because my supplier had my normal clips. This is something, when you get 15 inch drawer slides, sometimes the um, suppliers, they don't have them in. And the, um, the, the brand I like, uh, the blue, so sometimes I have to get knockoff ones or another manufacturer, we'll call it. And it's not, they're not as good. Uh, if I've got a bunch to do, I'll try to get them, you know, kind of in groups. So just to make it a little bit simpler. These are five eight screws. These are self drilling tips. You do not have to pre drill, but you depending on the material, you might want to. When you're drilling into this, you want to make sure that you're pushing down and have the drill bit at a little bit of an angle. You don't want this thing flying up in the air. In the, um, sometimes it'll happen, but... So this is the simple jig. It's got an adjustment for the placement of the hole. And ideally, your placement of the hole is going to go um, a bit. Let me show you right like this. So it's going to be like that and you're going to be So that looks good. Um, let me take a vacuum, clean this up. Oh, you know what I have to do also? So I have to drill the holes for the uh, attachments. Once the um, uh, drawer fronts are on, I need to be able to attach those. So I need to drill those as well. 
Okay, I'm going to make some doors and I need to figure out the sizes for all my parts. So I've got my door sizes here. So um, I'm just going to show you how I quickly figure out the size of parts that I need. They're all going to be two and a half inch rails and styles. Okay, the styles are the vertical parts and the rails are the horizontal parts. The horizontal parts get what are called coped tenons on each side and the styles get what's called a stick joint. Essentially that's the one with the profile and um, the profile also goes on the rails as well. But on the ends of the rails that's where that cope goes and it actually sticks into the styles a little bit. It's like a little tenon that sits inside the groove of all the parts. So we need to figure out how big to make everything. And if we take our um, height, 19 and 3 quarters, that's going to be our size for the style. So we have that 19 and 3 quarters by 2 and a half. For the rail, we need to take the 16 total width. So I'm going to go 16 inches. Now my calculator, I have to put an inch. I'm not just saying it. Minus the total thickness of the pieces. So I'm sorry, the width, not the thickness. Two and a half two and a half. So that's five. So that's five inches. So that gives me 11 inches. That's the inside dimension. Now we just need to add back the tenon depth. Now in my particular case, the router bit set that I use is 13 sixteenths. So it's just, it's 13 30 seconds on each side. That's what I end up being. So 13 30 seconds times 2 is 13 16 So I'm going to add that back. Add 13 16 back. And that's going to give me 11 and 13 16 for the rails. So I'm going to go ahead and put that 11 by 2.5. All right, so for my cut list, I'm going to go ahead and there's three doors that size. I'm going to go ahead and put down six since there's three doors. There's two of everything. So six at 19 three quarter by two and a half. Six at 11 and 13 sixteenths by two and a half. So that's that rail size. So these are the styles. And this is the rails. Now the panel, we figure out the same way. This is going to be a 3 8 inch panel. So let's go ahead and figure out what that height, we know what the width is going to be. So it's 11 and 13 16 because that's the width of the rail. But we're going to subtract 1 16 of an inch to give us a little extra room. So we're going to go 3 at 11 3 quarters 1 16th from 13 16th is 12 16th so that's 3 quarters now we need to figure out the height of it so we're going to do it the same way we figured out the rail so we're going to go the total height that's 19 inches 3 quarter subtract 5 inches plus that 13 sixteenths for the tenon. So that's 15 and 9 sixteenths. And now we want to subtract 1 16th from that. So 15 and a half. So 1 16th minus there is 15 and a half. So that's it right there. So that's that door. We need to do the exact same thing for the rest of them, but they're all done the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and figure all that out, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I figured I would show you a little shortcut. I'm sure I've showed you this before, but um, 
if you're figuring these rails and styles, um, I just, rather than saying minus five and then adding back that 13 sixteenths, I just take the 13 sixteenths off the five. So that equals four and three sixteenths. When you do that, you cut out the, the um, one of the steps there. It makes it a little simpler. All these parts are going to be made with I, my favorite um, paint grade door material that's uh, in a, like a non-wet area is using MDF for the rails and styles. And I really like to use that material because it's really um, stable and it paints beautifully. And the um, customers save money by having it done this way. So I give them an option. I always tell them, you can do it this way or you can do it another way. If you want to pay more money, then we can make it out of solid wood with MDF panels. And they always, most, most of the time, when they see jobs that are done with that MDF, they can't tell the difference. So I can't either, uh, frankly. Plus these don't crack. So when the lacquer goes on, the um, doors that I make here, they don't crack. The, the um, wood won't move much at all. And so they stay flat, they don't warp, and they don't crack the paint. So it's a pretty, it's a win-win all around. Okay, so I just need to figure out how many rips I'm gonna need for all these parts. It's gonna be several, but I'm gonna figure that out and I'll get back to you. Okay, <clears throat> I need eight rips. So I'm gonna go ahead and I already had these cut and process, so I just need to make them into two and a half inch strips. Now I believe I can get, um, I make it so I can get four out of these. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the parts for the doors to length, so the rails and styles. And um, of course I have my notepad. This has got all my parts on there. And as I do them, I just cross them off and that's it. Okay, now what I want to do is I have those cut. I want to mark the ends of the rails. I just go up like that. And that tells me those are going to be um, rails. They're going to be coped. It's just easy for me to remember. Styles here, rails here. go ahead and flip all these guys over so think of it like this is the face so we're going to be going down now if these were solid wood we would be doing this the same the same way everything would be done the same way uh, the only major difference with the solid wood is that um, you'd be thinking about possibly scoring the wood first because um, a lot of times, even with really good bits and stuff, you have a nasty grain direction of the wood. So it's easy to get a splintering and chip out. So I like to do a scoring pass, just a very little one. Very popular shaker with bevel 
it seems like everybody wants to do this profile these days. So I don't fight it. I like it, so go with it. Um, that's why I have it. You know, these sets are not cheap, but when you use them as much as I do, it makes a lot of sense. All right. So, which one goes first? Always the cope. Cope is the one with the bearing in the middle. Pretty much, that's the way I look at it. Um, there's lots of other different ways to look at which one goes first as far as the actual router bit um, to tell which is which. Uh, but if you cut a piece of this, you'll realize this creates a tongue, right? Because there's, there's an opening right there. So that creates a tongue. The tongue goes in to the groove. So you know it's a cope. Tail on this. Um, the speed's already down from that big... Um, bull nose bit that I was just using so that's fine I run this the recommended speed right there is 16,000 rpm so run it at whatever speed you you know you want to the box says 16,000 I'm gonna run it at about 16,000 um, no worries there now um, as far as setting the height and all that stuff I mean this treatment right here on the back side of the quarter inch or the 3 8 panel so that 3 8 panel is going to go in and it's going to be just like that so there's going to be that detail on that back side and that's a very cool detail so that's what it's going to look like on the front and then of course the back the key is that you want to make sure that this is up from the back side you don't want that surface to be higher than the surface of this, right? You, you want this part to be lower. So that's kind of your, your biggest thing right there. That's what you want. So whatever setting you use, you just want to make sure that that is, this part is in from here. And just kind of match this. And that is it right there. So, doesn't really matter what it is, but if you want to know what this particular height is, it looks like it's about um, to the bottom, to this part here, from the face to this part, it's about by sixteenths of an inch. Helps you. All right, now the setting of the depth. This is probably the hardest part with this particular profile because I can't see very well the um, bearing. I mean, I can't see it at all. So I actually have a mark on that bearing. I used a Sharpie. Um, when I say I don't use the bearing, I'm saying I really don't. I, I go close to it, but I don't touch it. All right, I think we got it. Height set, blast gates open, face down, and we'll run our test cuts. Now, I like to use push blocks like this. It's a push block mounted to a square cut piece of wood, and it just goes like that. And so I just push this through. As I'm pushing this through, that I wear gloves because it gives me a lot of grip. The last thing you want is for your fingers to slip, right? Um, okay, so you push this through, right? And when you push it through, you're going to notice you need to put down pressure on here. It needs to be pushed up against the fence and it needs to be squeezed against this. So when I do it, I kind of take my fingers and I pull against the block right and I'm pushing at the same time gently towards the fence and that's it I'm not like just pushing it through you know what I mean that's not the way it works you got to put down pressure and I'm putting down pressure so that it gives me 
you know, whatever the position that gives you the best leverage and keep your finger away from that spinning bit, but you know, it's plenty far away and this block is going to, you know, keep it going and then just go through the cut and it just cuts like butter. Let me go ahead and um, I'll turn on my vacuum and we'll process these. to make sure that they they're all done they're not hiding someplace making sure I got them all before I change my setup all right so this is just going to be changing the height that's all it is the fence stays the same I don't know I've seen so many people when they set this stuff up they move the fence I never really understood that I guess if you're changing the bit from above the table maybe you have to but it just seems so illogical you know and to have to set it up precisely where it was before that's crazy so no need to touch the fence and once you do this, so this is my test cut, and I'm just going to take this right on here, and with this, I can set up my height. So we're going to just try to get it close. So this has two cutters. Uh, there's, a, there's a top and a bottom because you can adjust the width of the groove. Uh, so these grooves have been adjusted to fit uh, my particular quarter inch plywood when I use it. Um, so right now we're using different materials, so it doesn't matter the thickness, but um, there's two cutters here. Some have one cutter, uh, I mean one blade, three or whatever actual teeth on it. But this is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the bottom cutter. So I want to match up the bottom tongue, the bottom edge of the tongue, to the bottom edge of that tooth. And once I get that aligned, I'm going to lock it in. Now, this is what I'm saying where you're going to have to fine tune it because it's, it's so hard to see. And even when you think you have it right, it's amazing how uh, it can be off just a little bit and you'll get a lip with the joint. So I'm going to go ahead and, and shoot for that right there. And um, I'm going to go ahead and run this test piece. So I'm going to use this piece as actually the test piece, and we'll see how it does. I'm going to go ahead and put the dust collector on, because this gets nasty.
done with that. So the next bit that I'm going to use is a bit that I don't use very often. In fact, up until recently, I've never used it. And it's this bit right here. And I'm going to show you how you can use this bowl making bit. That's all it is. It's a bowl or a tray bit. It's got a radius. It's not a square corner, so that's a nice radius. I am kind of amazed that I, I, I hadn't used that bit before. Not to make bowls, but to do what I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to make the back cut on the panels. All right, I already showed you this. That's what I'm going to do. So um, the reason I like to, I wanted to use um, this bit originally was because I wanted to use the power feed because I was making, I don't know, 20 doors or something, and I needed a, um, and they were large doors. I needed a way to run the um, power feed with the panel face down. Normally, I run it like this, and I use a um, a fluting bit. And it would make the profile just like this, except it would have a little more of a round over in there. But it's basically the same thing. But I didn't want to switch out the, um, you know, flip it around and make, make that run against the fence. So I decided to find a way to run it on the flat. And um, I'm glad I did because I needed to, to find a bit. And I came across that one in my stash. So I'm like, wow, how have... I not used that one before. That's crazy. A little static on that guy. Um, but in any case, um, pretty. I was pretty excited about it. Now, what you want to do is uh, for this particular depth of cut, um, it's like three quarters of an inch, I think, is how far up I'm going. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put the cutter furthest away. So as it rotates, furthest out, and once I get to that line. You know, use a tape measure or whatever you've got. Since I have this setup block, I'm just going to use this. And that's it right there. So let me go ahead and drop this down. So I'm just going to set the height for that. So if you didn't have this setup block, all you would be doing is just taking some um, light passes so that you get this tongue to be the thickness of your groove. So whatever that is quarter inch. Um, this particular case, it's just a little greater than a quarter inch. I was just going to show how uh, nice it is to have a feeder for something like this. It definitely makes a lot of sense. Swing it around. Now it's probably going to have to be adjusted, right? Because Every operation, pretty much, you have to adjust it. So what I do is I just angle the wheels so they're angling towards the back of the fence. It pulls it through. If you have it angled um, back towards the fence, it helps keep the material to the fence. Just essentially trying to get the bit to be somewhere in the middle of between the front wheel and the back two. And I've kind of found that that's kind of a nice spot to have it. But, you know, test it and see how you like it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a test cut. All right, we're ready to go. Let's do a test cut.
once you're done milling up these um, rails and styles, and it doesn't matter really what material you're using, there's always these little burrs that are left. Basically, they're just like little slivers of, you know, wood. So you just have to clear this out. You know, just take this stuff out and uh, knock it off. It'll help get the joints together easier if you don't have things, you know, that are going to get in the way, like little. Um, these things are ready to assemble. Before I do, I just want to check the fit of all these parts work with. So if you have a joint like this and it's very, very tight um, and you're, you're, you know, you're trying to fit this, you want to be able to work the material side to side. So as you build these, you want to be able to move the panel and the groove. So, but not too much where there's a bunch of slack and there's, you know, it's real loose, but you just want enough to where you can actually get uh, the uh, panel to move. Because once it locks in there, because, you know, I glue all these. Um, they're, they're glued. All the panels are glued inside. Once you start applying glue, you know, you try to move these things. If they're tight to begin with, they're going to be tight all the way through. All right. These come in really, really handy when you're doing a door glue up because they can um, make your uh, doors nice and square. So... I use these, I put them in my track, and it'd be, it's amazing how accurate your doors are when you glue them up. Um, so they're basically, they go with the Craig track, right? So um, they're really cool little little things um, that came with the track, so you, you didn't have to buy them extra. But uh, what it does is it keeps, as long as you're, um, your tracks are square to each other, you're going to get really good results. Um, so what I do is I, I, you know, assemble the door, I put it in here and basically use these as stops to um, kind of tap the door so that it gets square using these um, four setup gauges for lack of a better phrase. Um, definitely something that you probably seen but never really thought that maybe you had a use for um, but they're definitely cool I'll show you how I use them okay. I like to put glue in um, the grooves here so I've already checked the fit right I like to put glue back there and this is optional but I really think it's an important step because when you do this Again, only with um, panels that don't move. So if it's plywood, if you're doing quarter inch panels, uh, don't do it with solid wood unless you just do the middle of the rail because um, you're going to have a problem with expansion. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and I put this just like that. I start with the uh, rails. And the sequence is kind of, um, I think, personal preference for me. I've done it so long and made so many doors that it's just second nature. I try to keep the glue at a minimum in this joint, but you, you need you know you need a fair amount. But try not to go too close to the interior part of the door. So next to the beveled um, inside edge, what will happen is you'll get. Uh, uh, you'll get squeeze out and it will go in, you know, into the door panel. So you can clean that. It's no big deal, but it's no, it's one of those things you can avoid. Now, as you tap this down, you want to kind of flush out both sides as you're doing this. And if it's not flush, like that's really flush. This one's not perfect. I just use my mallet and then I tap and Tap it until it's flush. The beauty of having panels that aren't so tight is that you can do that. You can move it. Now just wipe the excess glue. Now 
not got that. All right. Go ahead and flip this over. So you can see how nice it is to do it this way uh, versus putting it in the, you know, let's say you attached one rail and one style. I think at some point in time, I think I did it like that. Back in the day when I was just beginning, I didn't really know how to put a door together. And I ended up doing it like that. And then you have to slide the panel in. And that's just, unless you're doing a door with a mid rail, it's kind of a, it's just not that easy to do it that way. And you end up messing things up. course one of the things that's tough on doors is the glue um, as you're doing this the glue is running down and every time you touch the door your fingers get glue on them and then of course you touch things like the panels if you're doing stain grade um, I don't use this type of glue if I'm using stain grade I use a different glue and um, that's better for stain but for paint grade, this is perfect. All right, now, see that door's right there. So now I've got that. Uh, what I need to do is, um, let's see that right there. So. Okay, so now I could put it right up against my thing. So and this is where you want to adjust the length of these. So get it where you feel like you're gonna have the best support. And it's generally anywhere near the edges on the styles. So, you know, a couple inches in from the end, top and bottom. And then this part is always bridging the gap between the rails and the styles where that joint is. You want these to be positioned right on the joint so that when you tap this, it doesn't go, you know, it stays flush. All right. So check this out. As I put these doors on, this door on, I'm touching th these two. And if I slide this over, I'm gonna see if I make contact with both of these pieces. If I make contact with both of them, that would be a shock. Usually I don't. And here's, let me show you what it looks like if you don't. See that? That movement? That tells me that my door is not square. strong check this and I love having my clamps right near my right on my workbench so I can just grab them and I'm ready to go right away I don't have to wheel a cart around. I made this to fit that, so it's pretty cool. definitely want to get the bottom. The bottom is really critical. Three-eighths strong. Three-eighths strong. So that's good. Perfect. Now you can see the advantage of having that 
um, area there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stand this up to dry. All right, I got a few more to make. My placement of these is going to have to change, right? So that's going to go there. This one I'll put up here on that joint. I have four of these to make, so it makes sense. Just about seven eighths. It's just over seven eighths. So we definitely want to tap this guy. We'll get it pulled in and we'll tap it. Right at seven eighths. It should be right at seven eighths. Perfect. Now, if I were to clamp this really hard, it's going to bow the the wood, right? So, if you're making a stain grade door or a paint grade door, it doesn't matter. You're still going to bow it. The tighter you crank these, it's going to cause this to lift up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is set my drawer slides, but in order to do that, I'm going to use my jig. Uh, this is great. It, I can put several different um, heights of drawer slides on here, and I don't have to cut pieces of wood, you know, every time I want to change the height or whatever. And, um, you know, wood pieces are fine too, scrap pieces if you want to um, make them, but, you know, that's actually, after a while, it's kind of a waste of wood, but if that's what you have, um, that works great. And one advantage to wood, um, you know, jigs is that you can make that wood, that height, and then, you know, it's exactly the same as you go across. There's no deviations, right? As long as that wood's cut square and everything's good, so you can go from side to side. So start with your top one, and then go with your middle one, and then your lower one, and then just do that on all of them. So that's a really cool way of doing it. And it, it does work well, but um, I have this particular jig, and I really like this, but, you know, whatever you have will work too. Okay, so the first thing is I want to establish my height of the um, drawer slides. So what I do is I just take the drawer front, I start at the top, just wherever that top is that you want to, um, you know, go to. And let me show you this fast. So this guy right here, there's a line right there. I'm going to be, that's where I want to be. So I'm going to be pretty tight to the underside of the counter. And then I'm going to come down every step. But, um, so this one starts there. I make a mark right there. Okay. So this is, this is going to be my first mark right there. And then I go down um, a little over a sixteenth of an inch, and that's going to be my next height, okay, right there. And then I do the same thing, and I just continue it down. So once you start getting to that point where you're, um, uh, you're getting these marks laid out here, It's very uh, easy as far as layout goes. Just put them on those marks. And then uh, you can measure. Just take your tape measure. And so I'm going to measure. All right, I'm trying to get it close, but it's hard to um, close, but also be able to see the whole thing. Um, this cabinet's a little large. OK, I take my, my door, right? I put it on here and I get a height of the door. So that tells me where that door is right there. And then obviously it's the same mark up there. So the, um, these marks here and I know where I'm gonna be. So now I'm gonna put my drawer slides just a little bit above the bottom of the drawer front. So if my drawer front is that line right there, I'm gonna put it up above that line a little bit, maybe like an eighth of an inch. Uh, we want to make sure that that's covered up. So we want that silver to be gone. 
Um, so when we put it on here, right, we just want that bottom to be covered up by the drawer front. So if you go about an eighth of an inch higher, you're good to go. Now on the bottom one, obviously, we can't, it's no problem there because we're already going to be back there. Now these are overlay, so um, the, the um, slides go up a bit onto the front. And then because I like to have a lip here, rather than try to get it flush, uh, I use a spacer. And because these bloom slides, bloom slides have a totally smooth bottom, I love it. Um, I just, I can't say enough about that. You know, some, a lot of these knockoffs, they have um, bumps at the bottom and they're uneven and they're annoying and um, they're just disgraceful. So when you go to put them in, a lot of times you'll end up with drawers that are kind of wonky, um, not even with each other. That's, uh, I mean, Bloom just has not beat by just leaps and bounds. But uh, if I pull it up here, it's going to be at a slight angle. So rather than fight that, I just put it on a spacer. And that spacer is just a little higher than the uh, face frame. So when I put it on here, it just sits ever so slightly above there. And then, of course, put, put one in the back, right? So it evens it out. And so it's not actually resting on the wood. Um, and then, you know, it's going to be level so, by using these. Okay. Now, um, so once you figure out the heights of all these, so you're going to add an, basically an eighth of an inch. Put my jig in. I'm actually going to be resting on the, this part, not this part. And there's a, there is a lip there. It isn't much, but there is something. Okay, so I'm just going to come down here, and I know I'm blocking the camera. All right, so that guy right there is 8 inches. I'm going to go 8 and 1 eighth. So I'm just going to make that mark, and literally I'm just going to write it down. 8 and 1 eighth, 16 and a quarter. So I'm going to make that 16 and 3 eighths. Take your um, jig or if you have a piece of wood or whatever you use and just uh, make sure that the, the tape measure is all the way down to the bottom. Is when you do this, they have to be identical from the other jig to this jig. So wherever you put that mark, um, it needs to be the same. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to line up that. I have a little bit of a line right there. I'm going to line that up with the eight and then tighten it down. So that's it right there. Eight on that one. And then this next one will go up to 16 and three eighths. And then this one, 24 and five eighths. All right. So there's my marks right there. Okay, so I've got these all set up, and basically I've got them test fitted, you know, as far as height goes. You know, it might take a little bit of work to get these guys even, but once you have them even, you should be good to go. Uh, in setting these up, you want to make sure that they're just, uh, they're both vertical, and you can tell that by just eyeing it down. If, if you see that the, you know, one of them is kicked out from the wall, um, you can tell. It'll change the height ever so slightly, but it might, you know, affect your mechanisms. All right. So those look good. I'm going to go ahead and set these in. This is where, um, I, do you remember me telling you that I didn't put a cleat? I'm not putting cleats on here because it's flush. Well, you can see the advantage of having these flush now. I'm going to start at about an um, eighth of an inch. I just have my gauge right there. And I'm just going to put it up here, flush this up to the, I'm going to pull
pull it right up to the front of my gauge and I'm going to go ahead and lock it in with the, with the screw. I'm going to pre-drill though just to make sure that, that the hole is centered. And I'm going to put in, these are number eights. one I'm going to do in a slotted hole. That way if I need to adjust these, I just have to loosen that up and then uh, loosen this guy up. This one's in a fixed hole, but I can change that. That's okay. Uh, just because of the, the location of it, the slotted hole is a little bit further back. But the back one I'm definitely going to use a slotted hole on. And in order to get at those, I just have to pull out the slide part. Now I just take it and I just rotate it so this is the same position it was and this is in the same position it was. That's it. All right, we can test it. All right, let's see if this fits. So it looks like the, uh, the drawer fits good, that's nice, but let's check the front and make sure that it's sitting tight. Well that looks good right there. Let me check the uh, other ones. That, I like that fit though where the door meets the cabinet. So you can see how nice that is. So that's what we want, right? Um, ultimately, if you have a space like that, that's fine because it's going to allow the door to shut nice and smooth. But if you're perfectly flush, that's fine. What's going to happen is when I put these um, drawer fronts on, I need the drawers to sit up against this or just a little bit um, away from the drawer. I don't want the drawer to be out like that, otherwise it won't shut right. It's got to be completely shut. Flush is the best, like this one's perfectly flush now. These are like a, a 64th in, 32nd in, and that's fine too. Because um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, nail these guys on because the, uh, the painters, they take the whole thing and it's easier for them to deal with it that way versus having to take them off, reposition them and all that stuff. So um, although sometimes I do just secure them with um, the holes and the handles, uh, I don't, we don't have the handles. They don't, customers not sure what they're going to put. So I don't have that ability to do that right now. So I'm just going to nail them on and the cut, the uh, painters are good with that. Uh, they're just going to, um, they just wrap it. If they don't paint the whole thing, they're going to wrap it and then clear coat the drawer, whatever they do, that's between the customer and the painters. I don't really care. As long as it looks great, I'm fine with it, you know. So when the drawer front goes on, that's a clean looking drawer box. Uh, screws hold really well. The, the strength is impressive for these uh, pocket screws into this Baltic birch. So this is Baltic birch, um, 60 by 60 is how I buy it, and it's 5 8 inch thick. All right, onto the doors. I gotta um, hinge those, and this cabinet's gotta go in tomorrow, so I've got a lot of work to do. And drilling holes for the hinges, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these. I've got five doors.
Uh, before I put the hinges on, I'm going to go ahead and sand all the edges, ease the edges, and make sure all the parts are nice and smooth. Even the parts that I jointed, um, I always joint the tops and bottoms to get rid of all the, um, the glue and to make the joints perfect. I'm going to use my 5 inch sander. I prefer that for the edges, like this. Much easier to control than the um, 6 inch. And then I'll use my inline sander for the, um, the edges to, knock, to, to ease them. And uh, I really like using that, uh, that sander. That's really cool. All right, I'm just going to go. I'm going to put my um, overhead air cleaner on. And I'm going to um, put my hose on, of course. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, the bottoms and sides, tops are all done. I'm going to take off this sharp, crisp edge and I'm going to make it a eased edge. And I'm going to use my inline sander. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do these. I like to pair them up or group them up if whatever. Rather than just doing one at a time. But I like to make sure that I leave the, the um, area here so I can see that. That's how I can tell whether or not this is square. The other option would be to just take a square like this if you don't feel comfortable, you know, doing it this way. You can take your square. See here, you can see it's not straight. I mean, you can see it's not straight or square, but by putting that square up there, you can tell it's square, but it's also parallel with that. I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera. This is the, um, the edge of the style, right? You can see that. So I know if I'm parallel with that, I'm square. And so after you get the first screw in, what you want to do is you just want to confirm that you're still square and make sure that you hit the middle of the hole. You can also use a, uh, a self-centering drill bit to uh, help with the um, placement of the hole. And if you're using material like um, really dense wood, you're going to want to pre-drill these. Now these are all soft clothes, but the reality is that you don't need soft clothes, um, two of them for these doors. So I'm probably going to switch these off because it's probably just too much for these little doors. Uh, these hinges have a switch to disengage the soft close feature. The reason I say it's cool because if you have a couple of doors that are small and they're slow, um, closing really slowly, you might want to switch them off. Just one of them. And then you'll know if, if you want to have it on it or if you don't want to have it on, but it gives you the option. So the painters will, um, They'll uh, number all my locations. So uh, they put it back right where they were. And these overlay doors, I mean, it's a little different than inset, but um, in some respects, it's a little more complicated, actually.
The only thing that's harder on inset doors is actually putting them in the cabinet and um, getting them set. But once that's done, you know, you have to install the cabinet. And once you install the cabinet, sometimes the doors shift on you. And that definitely doesn't happen with the overlay doors. Or you, you just never notice it. But I'd prefer inset. However, lots of people are wanting overlay and or they don't care. So right now, if, if they like the look, I'm cool with it. You know, it takes a lot less time to do these. I mean, my God. So much less time. All right, before I put the drawer fronts on, I want to drill for these. That's it. And I've got my backer. Um, you want to use this because you will damage the inside of the drawers by drilling in and it'll blow out. So, you know, I don't want that. So I'm angled a little bit towards the inside of the drawer, towards the center of the drawer. Not too much though. Okay, so now you want to make sure that you take those burrs off because any of those splinters, it's going to push out your um, drawer front. Okay, so this is my countersink bit. You know that, you've seen it before. This thing is great. So I'm just going to countersink it just a little bit. See what that does to the... Just makes that nice. So now when I do the front, it'll be nice and tight. All these areas where I'm going to fasten the countertop, I'm going to go ahead and fill a couple holes wherever I, wherever I want them, right? And that's going in towards the uh, inside. But you see that little countersink? First, I'm going to put this clip on. So I just put it on, set it right on top of that jig, and then secure it with a screw. One note, when you put these on, you want to kind of want the screw to be a little bit towards the cabinet and that will pull it tight to the face frame. If you have it a little towards the front of the cabinet, it'll shift it out and it won't be tight to the face frame. The little hooks right there. Little spacers in the way. All right, that clipped on. So now I've got that. I don't have to worry about holding this per se because I've got this to do it for me. So that's nice. Go right up here and I'm going to shift it a little bit to the inside. And then that pulls it nice to the cabinet. Square per se. All those lines represent um, three quarter inch from this. And so that would be where my stopping point is for the drawer front. All right, I've got this thing lined up and I'm using my layout lines and I'm starting out just a little high. I mean, barely high because I'm pretty sure this is going to drop down after I put this up, like let it go. So once it drops down, it should be right there. Plus I can level it if I need to, but um, I'm just barely starting it 
down from my layout line. And I've got my the side layout lines as well as this space and that space are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and take my brad nailer and tack it with a, um, one, and a, a one and a quarter or one inch. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and then shut it and see where it lies. Yeah, that thing is like right on the line. Perfect. So um, <clears throat> this is what I was saying was it's nice to have um, a tight drawer front right there. So I, when I when they're flush, the drawer boxes are open when they're flush with the opening or really close to it, I can get a nice tight fit to the drawer box. But if it's too far in, there's a gap. So it's hard. The nail goes in and it kind of, there's a space there. Then it's hard to draw it tight without shifting the drawer front. So, all right, since this one nail is right there, I'm going to go ahead and, and just kind of hold this while I drive it. Give it a little support. So now we can go to the next one. That's good right there. And um, these have adjustability also. Um, did you by any chance see that drop just a touch? They always do. All right, that, that's good though. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this in. It's nice and tight. An eye on the layout lines. Everything seems good. Now, in here, I can go ahead and there's two ways that I can do it. As I'm doing this, I can put spacers in here to raise it up. And I'm going to tack this right now. The painters, when they take this stuff out and they do all their work, they're ultimately going to um, put it back and they'll figure out how to get it right. Um, you know, I go back to the job site also because I want to make sure everything's good and make sure that the paint job's great and take pictures of it and uh, video. So um, you'll see um, this job completed because I'm going to go back and put handles on it after it's painted. So you'll be able to see this all nice and painted and everything. So I'm going to go install it tomorrow. It's going to be a long day. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it in one day. Okay. <laughs>